Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, coast to coast. This Week in America, back with us on the program, talented author William Hoy. We talked about his intriguing novel, or we will this week, about the gifted one called The Spiritual Awakening That Lifts the Senses to New Heights, a sci-fi thriller with mystery, spiritual fancy, scenic travels through China, Morocco, and the Black Hills of South Dakota, and murder. William, born in San Diego, graduate of Columbia, retired from the U.S. Army, CW04. In the early 2000s, William started his writing of the first novel, Undying. Many hits and misses, finally getting it published. He's the author of Gotcha, Johnny Taggart, a tough guy detective. We talked about that on a pass this week in America. You'll find it all of the podcasting networks on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Coming up, Usurper, inspired from a true story about a young man in the 1890s, who's selling land out in California, decides to become a priest to make a lot of money. Can't wait for that one. And by the end of this year, William will have a sequel to Gotcham called The Killing Squad, Johnny Taggart. William is involved in the movie business, been in a dozen movies as an actor, also an associate producer on several productions, an actor and associate producer in in Arcanus, and Carnatus, a six-episode series on YouTube, currently working on several movie treatments and scripts from his novels, talking with several production and publishing companies who are interested in his projects, and he still finds time, thankfully, to write new novels. William D. Hoy, author of The Gifted One, back with us on This Week in America. William, welcome back to the program. Well, it's great. It's great to be back. Uh, thank you very much. We talked about Encarnatus the last time, and I had a flashback, and I stumbled there because I can see this picture of you in my mind from the YouTube video, a uh, scary looking right at you with those eyes. You got to go check it out, Encarnatus at uh, at YouTube. The, the series there, a job well done with that. It is so nice to have you back to talk about uh, one of your other classic books, the gifted one, different than what we talked about last time. The old, uh, you know, tough guy private eye that we, that we talked about the gifted one fascinating book cover a lot of territory what was the inspiration for writing this book you know it's uh thinking back at it um the the, the first impression idea that i got was uh, back the old uh, i was watching this uh the old television show called kung fu oh yes it was uh, david uh david carradine Derek and yep. it was a Kind of like I rejected or kicked out uh, Ninja that was uh, he was roaming around up in the uh, San Francisco area during the gold rush days. And uh, the uh, interesting thing was, is that he got shot one time right right into the heart and no one would help him. But it didn't hit the heart. It was close to the heart. So he crawls off into this old dilapidated old house and with his mind he moved the bullet away from his heart, actually moved it out to the skin where he could take the bullet out. So it started leaving, a, it left an impression on me with thinking about how powerful the mind was. So over a period of time, I started putting things together. And one day I decided to write The Gifted One, where mind is stronger than matter. It's a fascinating read, and I mentioned all the locations. And talk about the locations and the fact that you're very familiar with all of these from your background, I understand. Yes. Uh, I, I'm a retired military, uh, Army officer, and uh, I spent quite a bit of time up into the Black Hills of South Dakota, and I saw Crazy Horse Mountain, and that is a uh, – uh, it, it has strong spiritual – area uh, up there with with uh, uh, with 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 Chief Crazy Horse uh, the uh, the the monument it's, it's extremely tall when someday but they'll never finish it but when it gets finished if they do it will be the tallest monument in the United States but one time I walked with a large group we called the Volkswalkers and we walked up on top of it and right underneath his chin I got a picture of myself, and the, 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 just the face is like 80 feet tall. But then, so I had a lot of, uh, there was a lot of, I could feel a lot of spirit in the air. 
So that was one part of the novel. Then another part of the novel was a uh, out in the Sahara Desert of Morocco. And uh, I went across the Sahara Desert for 10 days with uh, 10 other people. We had five camels and uh, extremely exciting, quite different. Started from Marrakesh and ended in Fez. Oh, wow. And so, so I used that in the back of my mind. And also I created a monastery on the river called Li River in South China down by the uh, – the tall mountains uh, where they had these 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 columns of limestone shooting yes. out of the ground. Uh, I mean, out of the water, like three or four hundred feet high, with moss growing all over them. And you've seen quite a few of these pictures in some of these uh, movies. But anyhow, I created a monastery down there, and I put that in the book as well. The book is the gifted one. I love the book cover. It sort of sets the stage for the the different scenes that uh, that William brings to life in the book. William T. Hoy, H O Y, is the author. Books available the usual places. We'll send you to Stratton Press dot com in the, in the bookstore. Who do you think the book will appeal to? You touch on so much there. You've got the sci-fi aspect of it. You've got a great mystery in there. You've got the the spiritual aspect as well. All of the travel. Who is the book? To, is there a particular group designed for? Because this seems to be like anybody who enjoys a good read is going to enjoy the gifted one. Well, I think I think almost it appeals to almost everyone. Yeah, but yeah. I think it appeals more to people who like uh, maybe uh, well adventure, of course, and um, the uh, uh, and the sci fi part of it, where this young boy will learn things that a uh, that a Shilong monk. Uh, bestowed to him back when he, well, he almost got killed and he uh, had this ability to, uh, he could detect things like he, he had perfect balance, just like a bat in the dark. Uh, He also, uh, he corrected his physical problem with his mind by uh, fixing the inside of his body just with his mind, uh, he 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 almost got killed in a collapse of a Cosba on the camel trip, and uh, uh, his dad got killed. You know, so uh, you know those those are the part where, and also there's some parts where I'm kind of traveling in between spots, like you could see the different areas, the beauty of South China. Uh, the beauty up in the Black Hills of South Dakota, even the beauty of the of the enormous sand uh, dunes in Morocco. You no, know, so. it's interesting. A lot of the themes that you you touch on in the book, the gifted one, uh, even though the book wasn't written a year ago, there's a lot. It's relevant today, isn't it? I think so. Um, I uh, it, it was interesting is that when I when I wrote the book, I started in the middle of the book. Right with the idea of using your mind, then I went one way and then I went back the other way, and somehow I wrote the book and it all makes sense. But uh, a lot of things uh, with the uh, with the science, uh, you know. Uh, so I think it does have have bases of today and yesterday. You know, it's interesting, and we talked about this. We had uh, William on a past show where we talked about uh, uh, the book Gotcha, Johnny Taggett. The book's available, uh, of course, still all over the country, stratton-press.com. In the bookstore there, you'll find it at Amazon, all the usual places. And uh, the, the audio from that on your favorite podcasting network, you'll find it on our website and be able to listen to it and watch the video on YouTube as well. Unconventional would be a good way to describe your writing. Not too many authors start at the middle of the book and and then go from there. Not many authors are writing multiple books all at one time, various genres at, at that. This works for you, doesn't it? This has been very productive. I think it says something about your your creative mind that you don't need like sort of a formula to do this. You can just sit and write stories. Yeah, it, I think it goes back even when I was a young kid. I was uh, trying to write a few things uh, I remember my my mother uh, gave me this paper that I was writing a story, and I don't remember how how old I was. I think I called the story the the Kibbelets, 
if I can remember that, you know, and it was something like the knights was fighting each other in a castle. Uh, but, but that was a long time ago, but nowadays I'm, I'm writing, uh, the genre of sci-fi. I'm writing a tough guy. Then I'm writing kind of like a, a drama true story. And maybe, maybe in the near future, I might be writing something like a military, uh, you know, but not, not, not military history, but military some kind of a battle or yes. whatever i haven't, haven't figured that out yet you know but uh, but it's a um, it's a challenge i'm not really sure where my strong part is but we'll, we'll see someday well, you do such an excellent job of, bl- of bringing scenery a- alive especially in this book the gifted one talk about that very descriptive with the uh, the moroccan area for example and, and you were talking about some of the beauty there Sites like that, even though, again, it wasn't really recent, they sort of stick with you for the rest of uh, your life, don't they? Yeah, it's uh, I could get into some of the little details. You know, you see it on television, but you don't really, really know exactly until you're right there. Uh, you know, like uh, you could be going through the crowd and you'll see uh, three or four guys sitting there with cobras, real live cobras. Uh, dancing in front of you, you know, and things like that. And then you could uh, walk around and you'll see the men uh, where they're, they're called water men. Back in the old days, they had no water, but you could buy water from a, from a uh, couple of men walking along with a carrying water on a pack and they would sell you a cup of water. Uh, or you could go into the souk, I think that's what they call it, the souk, and that would be the shopping area, but it's all covered by kind of like a canvas, oh, okay. all types of canvas, and, and there's so many different alleys you could go into, and you could totally get lost. You, you can't remember w- where you've been, you know, you, so you kind of remember what you passed is how you can figure that out, you know, or you could go to another spot where, um, where they, uh, they die animal hides and the animal hides are raw so it very putrid smell and there's a building a two-story building that's right beside these pits and you take the side stairs and you go up on top and you can look down and there's maybe about 30 or 40 of these large round circular holes in the ground and each one has a different color of hides and there's men that goes and takes these hides and drops them in and holds them in with a stick. And all all these men are dyed from their fingertips up to their shoulders, just about holding these hides in the ground. But what happened to me, we're walking along and this woman is standing there by these stairs and I'm following the group and she gives me this, uh, this weed, you know, and I go, I don't know. I'll I'll take the weed. I don't know. How much it cost? She says, no, you know, she couldn't speak English. So she just hands it to me a little piece so you take it up, and you're wondering what you're supposed to do with this weed. But when you get up on top, the smell is so horrible, you got to have something sticking in your nose. And it was had some kind of a scent to it, like a, oh, I don't know, menthol or something, okay, you yes. know. And, and you'd kind of tear the leaves and stick them up by your nose so it would overcome the smell that you're, you're smelling while you're looking down while they're dying these hides. So I found all that very, very interesting. And so I try to put that into the, the book and I'm trying to explain it to the people so they could get more out of what they're reading. Well, you do. You feel like you're there and that's a, a, a rare talent. Sometimes people just go on and they're trying to be descriptive and they lose you and they over describe. We feel like you're there. The book is The Gifted One. William D. Hoy is the author back with us on the program. Talk to William on a past show about uh, Gotcha Johnny Taggett. Uh, a few minutes left in the program. Boy, going by so quickly. You've got so much going on. Tell me what you're working on now, because I know you've got several books. You've got people that are interested in in uh, maybe motion picture, that type of thing. What's in the future for you? Because if I know you correctly here, and I just met you a brief while ago, but you've got a number of uh, irons in the fire, I'm sure. Well, 
I, I'm working on all these different things, which I'll get to in a minute, but something just popped up about a week ago. Um, a good friend of mine that lives back in Missouri, uh, she decided to write a novel and uh, it was about her, her story. Uh, so uh, I mentioned my publishing company. So they got together and they decided to, uh, she's going to have her book published with them. Well, between my good friend at the publishing company and her, they decided that I should write a forward for the book. Well, I, uh, I haven't really written a forward. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I rolled up my sleeves and I got into it. And, and I, I think I wrote her a very nice two page forward. I said it to my publishing company and they told me, it says it's one of the best pieces they've seen. It says it did an excellent job. So I just put that as part of my portfolio. And, uh, so I, uh, so, so now maybe, I don't know, uh, you know, a, a forward, you market yourself and you also market the person's book that you read. So, so I, I did both. So now I've, uh, kind of got into it. So I'm back on, I'm writing a treatment for Gotcha, And oh, I've also written a, uh, a, a movie script. It's a 400 page script. And when I get done with a treatment, I'm going to send it to uh, a, a very um, um, famous actor. Um, and uh, I think his character, his looks, his size fits the, the, the description of the protagonist of Gotcham. So I'm working on that one. And uh, then I'm trying to uh, finalize my editing on uh, Usurper, which that's going to be coming out as soon as I could get that done. And now I'm starting to think about maybe starting another book, which I like to write two or three books at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I was so taken back when you were talking about doing that because so often people just finish one, they've got all the outlines and, and all of these descriptions and trying to match everything here. And, and you're just uh, jumping back from one book to another and doing it successfully. I'm looking forward to the, uh, uh, the sequel, Johnny Taggett, the, the killing sound, does that still look like later this year? Uh, probably, probably closer to the first of the year. Uh, you know, uh, I've got, you know, I'm trying to move it along, but I got a couple other projects, so I, I can't really just put one down and, and focus yes. on the others a hundred percent because then it takes too long to get something moving when you work on the other items. So if you work on them both at the same time, they both move along, and um, I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I'm thinking. Maybe I could get them done quicker if I work on them both at the same time. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, well, yes, the finished product, in this case, finished products are, are excellent. The uh, the book that we talked about, I love the uh, Gotcha, Johnny Taggett, the, the Killing Squad, Johnny Taggett, will be out soon, maybe the first of the year, but it's almost the end of the year, so we don't have to wait that long. Usurper, when do you think we'll be able to read that? I I love the premise of that. I'm really anxious to see where that story goes. Well, probably uh, real close to around the end of the year, maybe maybe a little bit before uh, I'm setting up my website, so uh, I'm going to have uh, uh, you know, everything, uh, this um, interview and the other interview and all of my movie stuff and all my books. I'm trying to get it all into one website, so it'll make it interesting when someone visits my website. They'll, they'll be entertained. Or they'll, they'll be looking at all different types of things, you know. You have so much to offer. I just, uh, it's such a pleasure to, uh, I've had William on a couple of programs and I'm sure we will do this again. This book we're talking about, The Gifted One, you'll find it now at Amazon at stratton-press.com in the, uh, the book sections. And it's sort of like, you know, all of your memories come back in book form at some point, don't they? I don't know when you were actually uh, doing some of these things that you talk about describing the gifted one. Did you ever think I got to put this in a book someday or did they just come back to you? Yes. Um, the, the way I uh, kind of get things going and, and, and I, when I get an idea, I try to write it on anything that's available, uh, napkins, uh, restaurant things i've even got it written on a, a beer mug uh, <laughs> for germany you know you put yes. those on those things i write them on those i've written it on toilet paper i've written on newspaper i've got everything so i've got them stuck everywhere but it just seems like when i pull that piece out and i could read those 
three or four sentences that I wrote down, it just kind of flashes back in my mind and I could just get something going. But sometime I have to kind of be careful. I can't get, I can't write too many books at the same time. So I try to write a little bit and put it aside so that I can refer to it later. And, you know, I, I'm not really sure where, where that's going to go. <laughs> well, it, it's interesting to follow all of this. This one, again, is The Gifted One. That's the, the book that's out now, one of the books that's out now, and you'll find it at stratton-press.com. A sci-fi thriller, mystery, spiritual fantasy, scenic travels through China, Morocco, the Black Hills of South Dakota, and didn't even get to the murder, but there's murder involved in this as well. So there's something there for everybody. An excellent job once again. William, it is always fun having you on the program. We're looking forward to having you back with us. Thank you for being with us once again. Yes, uh, it was a pleasure. I really enjoyed it, and uh, possibly we might be back and talk about uh, Usurper very soon. Looking forward to that. William Hoy, our guest on the program, this book, The Gifted One. You'll find uh, the other books, Gotcham, uh, Johnny Taggett. You'll find that at Amazon, Stratton, uh, dash press, or Stratton dash press, yeah, dot book, dot com. So many dots and dashes in there, Stratton dash press dot books. You'll find it there. And then a slash and go to the bookstore and, and you'll find it. But I tell you what, go to our website this week in America dot us. You'll end up with all the information on William's book. Always a pleasure. Thank you for being with us. You're listening to this week in America back after these messages. This week in America is online. You can visit our website this week in America dot us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.